The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Well, welcome to our service today. And we are still working our way through an alphabet of non-subscribing Presbyterianism. And today we've reached the letter M. And M is for Henry Montgomery. So we'll begin with a hymn which Alan will play for us. Now Bobby will read for us from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Good morning everyone. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 23 verses 1 to 12. The reading is from the New English Bible. Jesus then addressed the people and his disciples in these words. The doctors of the law and the Pharisees sit in the chair of Moses. Therefore, do what they tell you. Pay attention to their words, but do not follow their practice, for they say one thing and do another. They make up heavy packs and pile them on men's shoulders, but will not raise a finger to lift the load themselves. Whatever they do is done for show. They go about with broad phylacteries and with large tassels on their robes. They like to have places of honour at feasts and the chief seats in synagogues, to be greeted respectively in the street and to be addressed as rabbi. But you must not be called rabbi, for you have, no, you have one rabbi and you are all brothers. Do not call any man on earth father for you have one Father, and he is in heaven. Nor must you be called teacher. You have one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be your servant. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. Well, that passage was a favourite amongst non-subscribers in the 1820s at the time of the second subscription controversy. It spoke to them of Christian liberty, of being liberated from a formal type of religion that was held in place by hidebound practices. 
liberated to one which went directly to Christ, which brought everyone together in unity in following the call of God. For you have one teacher, and you are all brethren, and call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. For non-subscribers, at the time of the second subscription controversy, this was a powerful message. And no one embodied this message more than Henry Montgomery. So having reached the letter M, we look today at Henry Montgomery. Now at the very start of our alphabetical journey, we looked at John Abernethy, the first person in Ireland to articulate non-subscribing principles. And I mentioned then that I wouldn't make uh, the alphabet uh, just a list of famous people. But having reached almost exactly uh, the middle point in our alphabet, it's time to have a look at another brief biography, our second. And just as John Abernethy was the leader at the time of the first crisis, so Henry Montgomery was the undoubted leader at the time of the second controversy. We couldn't leave out John Abernethy and we can't overlook Henry Montgomery. Now Montgomery was an impressive figure both in terms of stature and intellect. He stood six foot four inches tall and was regarded as such a competent orator and leader that he was made moderator of the Synod of Ulster at the young age of 30. In 1829 he returned to Belfast after being in London to lobby for Catholic emancipation to be received at a public dinner where Dr William Crowley, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Down and Connor and the future Archbishop of Armagh, uh, described him as a man of distinguished talents who has long been regarded as the champion of civil and religious liberty, a gentleman who has done more service to our cause in his late visit to our sister country than the whole deputation of the Catholic body could have affected. And in Montgomery's personality, there was this belief in civil and religious liberty, which he carried to its fullest point. Now Montgomery was born in 1788 in Khalid in County Antrim. He was educated at the Crumlin Academy which was run by the Reverend uh, Nathaniel uh, Alexander and from there he went to study as so many Presbyterian ministers from Ulster did at the University of Glasgow. And when he returned and when he finished his training he was called to the congregation here at Dunmurray to this very church and he was ordained in September 1809 and Montgomery spent the whole of his ministry here and there's still much to remind us of his ministry in this place among them a monument to him and a monument uh, also to one of his sons. Now he was ordained by the Presbytery of Bangor, at that time part of the Synod of Ulster, and was not required to subscribe to the Westminster Confession of Faith. Such had been the change of opinion within Irish Presbyterianism since the first subscription controversy, that most presbyteries had abandoned uh, the practice of subscription. His memory of the church at the time of his ordination was one that he described in later life as an assembly of Christian freemen where amid the variety of creeds there was unity of spirit. I gloried in the name Presbyterian and rejoiced in my church where the Bible was the only standard of faith and the conscience of man was free. Now, alongside his ministry he took up the role of teacher and boarded pupils in his house. Later he became the head of the English department at the Belfast Academical Institution, now the Royal Belfast Academical Institution. And there he was held in high regard. But the way was set for a growing battle over the identity of Presbyterianism, 
which was particularly characterised by the struggle between Montgomery and his main adversary, his near contemporary, Henry Cook. Now there isn't time to explore all the ins and outs of this struggle, but it became a hard-fought uh, battle between the two sides. It was a struggle which caught the public imagination as well. In 1827, for instance, Henry Montgomery made a speech at the Synod at Straban in which he advocated religious tolerance without compulsory subscription to any creed. Now, this was widely reported, as were all the debates in all the newspapers, but this particular uh, speech uh, was published separately and sold 30,000 copies. Now, a lot of the argument came to revolve around the Belfast Academical Institution, with Cook opposing the presence of people like Montgomery and William Bruce on the staff. Against this, the non-subscribers were in favour of the free imparting of knowledge. And Cook's reactionary stance can be seen also in his opposition to the appointment of John Ferry as Professor of Moral Philosophy at Inst. Ferry was an entirely orthodox minister of the Church of Scotland, but he taught philosophy as it would have been taught in Scotland at the time. But for Henry Cook, even this was too much. And in large part, his opposition to Inst uh, resulted in it not becoming uh, the university that might have been its destiny. Now, as I mentioned, Montgomery supported Catholic emancipation, although he would not support Daniel O'Connell's campaign to repeal the Union. He stood in the tradition of reform, in the extension of civil and religious liberty. As part of this, he was also a key figure in lobbying for what came to be called the Dissenters' Chapels Act of 1844. This was such an important piece of legislation that guaranteed non-subscribers and Unitarians continued use of their meeting houses. Now, without it, they, our religious ancestors, would have lost nearly all of their property. So it can't be emphasised enough how important this particular act was. And Henry Montgomery was closely involved uh, in his being passed. Now within the Presbyterian Church, Montgomery and his supporters made a case for the continued uh, use of liberty of opinion within the church and the rights of private judgment, the rights of the individual. But despite his endeavours, Cook's position gradually won the day within the Synod. Montgomery and his supporters signed a remonstrance against the decision of Synod over subscription and eventually they were forced out of the Synod in 1830. Now in short, Montgomery was a friend of liberty and an opponent of bigotry and political intolerance. In some ways it was devastating to be forced out of the main body of the church which had so recently asserted the rights of private judgment. But in forming a separate denomination, which later could make common cause with other non-subscribing bodies, he had assured the survival of this important strand of life within Irish Presbyterianism, a strand which continues to this day, of which we are proud to be a part. Well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer, let us pray. O oh God, as we come together in this time of worship, we give thanks for all those who have worshipped here before us in our churches. We give thanks for those who laboured to establish the cause, for the struggles and sacrifices of those who came after, and for all those whose lives have been devoted to your service. We give thanks for their witness, for their courage, for their vision, and for their faith. In giving thanks for those who have gone before us, we remember also our own duties. We pray that we may be worthy successors of them in our churches, 
and stand firm in the line of all who have lived their lives in love and truth. May our eyes be open to the needs of our own day, in our community, in this country, and indeed throughout the world. And may we be ever willing to serve where we can, to help when help is needed, and at all times to live according to the high calling of the life of faith. And these and all our prayers we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us in our service today. And thank you to Bobby for reading. And thank you to Alan for playing for us today. In a moment we'll finish with a hymn played for us by Alan. But let's close now with the benediction. Now may the light of God illumine our souls and the warmth of his love kindle a flame of devotion in our hearts. May his blessing now descend upon us and remain with us this day and evermore. Amen.